President Donald Trump has backed a deal that will allow TikTok to continue operating in the country weeks after threatening to ban the Chinese-owned video app. About 100 million Americans use TikTok and U.S. officials have expressed concern about user data and the potential for China to access that data. TikTok, a social media platform that allows users to create, share short music videos, is owned by ByteDance and has for months been embroiled in a political charged battle with President Trump. In August, President Trump released an executive order directing ByteDance to sell all of its U.S. operations within 90 days, citing a political data threat. On Monday, U.S. tech giant Oracle struck a deal with ByteDance to control the popular app. The new company, dubbed TikTok Global, will have a majority of U.S. shareholders and is expected to create 25,000 jobs. President Trump has assured users that security will be 100% on the new app. It's a severance. Uh, it'll continue to be named TikTok as it was uh, all along, and uh, that's it. That's it. So uh, I can say that I have given the deal my blessing. If they get it done, that's great. If they don't, that's okay too. But it's a great deal for America, and... Uh, very interesting. Oracle has agreed to a 20% stake in the company. The remaining 80% of shares will be distributed to ByteDance investors. If the deal is approved by government, Oracle will become the most trusted technology provider in the U.S. Meanwhile, an order which could see other tech giants such as Apple and Google from offering TikTok in their app stores has been postponed by one week. Well, renowned tech journalist Jan Vermeulen is the editor-at-large of South Africa's largest technology news website, My Broadband. He joins us now on Skype to share some insight into this developing story. Jan, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to The Globe. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. What is the big deal about, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, TikTok uh, issue and uh, what, what could have possibly led to the fallout between President Donald Trump and TikTok? And why is this issue always hogging the headlines? Right, yeah, it's part of a much larger trade war between the United States and China. And uh, we, we started seeing uh, this in the tech space with the United States and the Trump administration basically banning U.S. companies from having any dealings with Huawei. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of speculation that that really has more to do with 5G than it has to do with, with national security concerns. And uh, now, similarly, uh, Donald Trump and the, or the Trump administration taking on uh, TikTok. Uh, and not just TikTok, but WeChat as well, which which we know in South Africa uh, as a it's it's an app developed by Tencent, which is um, of course uh, has a, a Nuspatch, our locally uh, you know local company Nuspatch has some uh, a huge stake in Tencent, and uh, and part of the reason here uh, that's not really spoken about is the fact that U.S. tech giants uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, they can't actually operate in China. When you go to China. You can't use Google to search for things. You have to use the Chinese equivalent of it. You can't access Twitter. You can't access Facebook. The, the, uh, the Chinese uh, government has blocked these apps in the country, and uh, the, you basically have to use the Chinese equivalents of those social media applications if you want social media in the country. And, uh, and so certainly one can see from the U.S. perspective, they might go, no, but hang on a second. If you aren't going to let our companies and social media apps unfettered access in your markets, then why should we allow you to come into the United States and, and compete against us on a, on a fair footing? And so uh, that's, that's certainly one way to look at it. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the thing about national security does feel a bit like a smokescreen. There, there might be legitimate concerns there. Um, but the fact is, if you were to compare the data gathered by an app like TikTok versus, say, a Facebook or a LinkedIn, and the way Facebook, uh, Facebook's applications have been, or Facebook's platform has been used by external forces to manipulate uh, American citizens. Uh, I mean, we've seen this in South Africa as well, but if you are the U.S. and you're looking at, you know, how Russia's involvement 
uh, in the 2016 national elections in the United States and how they used Facebook and Facebook's data to do that, uh, then that's a national security concern as well. And Facebook is, last time I checked, not owned by a Chinese company. And speaking of security concerns, uh, what then do you make of claims that the Chinese government could possibly be involved uh, in using some of the data of uh, TikTok users for their own, you know, for their own benefit to sort of spy on Americans? Yeah, I guess that's entirely possible. Uh, it's, it, uh, ByteDance has denied it. That's as much as we know. Um, and, uh, you know, one can make a counter accusation and say that the United States government you know, uses Facebook and Google data. And in fact, uh, Edward Snowden's uh, revelations uh, certainly uh, point to that with, with PRISM. Um, so, uh, you know, th this is, this is a, a new form of warfare that's emerged between superpowers. And, uh, and uh, you know, this, while there, there might be truth to that claim, there's an unstated and unrecognized converse to that, which is that the U.S. does exactly the same thing. I mean, the, the, the fact that uh, this deal that has been reached between Oracle, uh, which is an American firm, and TikTok, uh, we do understand that uh, uh, TikTok has, has accepted the deal, but then is, uh, it, they are ostensibly working on to reaching an agreement that was in line with U.S. and Chinese law. Uh, why the concern, though, of uh, aligning that particular deal with the Chinese law? Will that not perhaps give rise to the claims that the Chinese government is in a way involved in this? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the fact is that whenever there's a huge multinational deal like this, uh, the regulators of the various countries involved have to give their approval. Um, and so, you know, if something like this were to happen in South Africa, our competition authorities would have to give the AOK -okay on that. And it's the same thing here with these two major, with these two big nations is uh, Donald Trump has said, great, you know, the, the United States thinks his deal is, is fine. Now the Chinese have to say whether they agree. That, that the deal suits them uh, in terms of their laws. Uh, that, that's that's the, the, the nature of big business. Um, what's interesting in this deal is that uh, Donald Trump didn't get exactly what he wanted. Initially, the, the idea here was for TikTok's American operations to be sold wholesale to an American company. That's not happening. It looks like ByteDance is going to be holding at least 7% uh, of uh, the the uh, of the company, um, it's not going to be wholly owned by an American uh, company. Um, some of it looks like it's going to be publicly traded. We, we'll we'll see what the structure of the deal is at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, the you know the, the combination of of uh, of Walmart and Oracle um, is going to own uh, you know just under thirty percent of the company, uh, as opposed to or, sorry, just over thirty percent of the company, I believe, um, which is not a majority. But then uh, the the rest of the shares uh, is, is going to be open to, to uh, the U.S. with 7% going to ByteDance. So it's not wholly owned by an American company like Donald Trump wanted. So there, there is a bit of a compromise, uh, at least here, and we'll see if the Chinese government accepts that. And taking into cognizance that particular compromise, uh, do you reckon that uh, the security concerns that the Trump administration have raised uh, about uh, Chinese, uh, you know, ab about TikTok spying on Americans will be put to rest now that an American company is involved in this deal? Yes. Uh, so provided that the data then comes to U.S. soil, which it already is. Um, but uh, I guess the idea here is that uh, they'll be able to monitor whether this data, uh, you know, where this data goes and, and who has access to this data. Um, but certainly we've seen um, that that really doesn't stop outside forces from using data like this to, to have an impact on, on uh, other countries. Um, you know, uh, if, if a, a Russian government agency wants to have an impact on South African politics, they can just buy ads on Facebook. Um, or, or create shill accounts, bot accounts uh, on Facebook and Twitter that seeds all kinds of either misinformation or divisive content uh, and have an impact, a political impact in a country.
And uh, so, you know, just because, uh, you know, the government might not be able to spy directly on the data, that doesn't mean that a foreign power can't actually use that platform uh, as a weapon against another country, um, like we've seen uh, Facebook and Twitter being used. So uh, in, in, the, in the, the, the privacy of the data, perhaps that question is answered. Uh, but uh, to me, that misses the point. And we are told that President Trump uh, is certain that he wants to use the deal to create a $5 billion fund to educate people about the real history of uh, the American people. Uh, you reckon this is an electioneering tactic? Yeah, I think we're getting closer to the truth of, of what's really behind these deals. Is it's, it's about politics, it's about, uh, elect, it's about you know, getting re-elected, and it's about economics more than anything else. So uh, uh, creating jobs for a country is a fantastic thing. I, I don't want to take away from that. That's, that's an incredib incredibly noble goal uh, uh, at a surface level. Um, but uh, and and the, 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 all, the only point I'm trying to make is that the, the whole thing about it being a national security issue and all that, it's really a smokescreen to get at all these other things, which is uh, ensuring uh, uh, American companies get a slice of the pie, uh, creating local jobs through that. And then, um, you know, whatever, you know, Donald Trump can get out of it uh, so that it bolsters his image so that he can get reelected. So will this harm or essentially exacerbate the U.S.-Chinese tensions? This is, this is part of a larger, uh, a larger trade war between the nations. And uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's perhaps just part of sort of the, the, the larger posturing between the countries to finally get at a workable compromise. Uh, because at this stage, uh, the, the whole Huawei situation is still um, is still in a bad in a bad way, uh, and we're feeling the effects of that right here in South Africa with Huawei phones not being able to access Google services or not being able to access Google services in the same way. The the, the phones don't work in the same way that they used to, and uh, and that that is something that really needs to be sorted out. But uh, the the this is part of that process of, uh, you know, getting to a state where I, I guess the, the, the U.S. feel that uh, they are uh, not being shortchanged in the trade department with China. Uh, whether that's the case, I'll, I'll leave to people with macro, with specializations in macroeconomics to rather discuss. But um, broadly, that's, that's what's at play here. Yeah, and we've seen Trump's high-profile attacks on TikTok and ByteDance uh, already taking their toll on the app. And uh, we do understand that it has an estimated 100 million users in the United States. So uh, now that, uh, I mean, do you see a popularity of this app rising even further now that an American company is involved? Yeah, very, very uh, interesting question. Uh, because what we saw when Trump announced... Uh, or the Trump administration announced that they were going to ban downloads of these apps, we saw downloads on WeChat spiking mm -hmm. in the United States. And so uh, the, the just talk of the ban, never mind the, the, the actual sale going through, just talk of the ban increases downloads on the app, which will naturally translate into more users on these apps. And so... Uh, you know, whether or not an American company takes over the, the data uh, warehousing of these apps is, is largely irrelevant to, to the user growth. Um, but certainly there's, there's nothing like bad publicity when it comes to things like this. Just because uh, these apps are in the headlines all the time, they've seen tremendous growth in, in, across the world, but in the U.S. market in particular. All right, Jan, great, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your insights.